episode of Stitch Method. Today we are going to teach you a couple of things. Number one, how to spice up any moment you want to spice up on the guitar, and also totally demystifying and truly understanding the term sixth or sliding sixth. Uh, in my personal opinion, this is the worst term ever to be invented in music. Uh, it really confuses the out of people and it, it's so simple to understand except the terminology that's involved is what makes it very, very confusing. So what are these sliding six and, 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 and how do we use them? Well, a sliding sixth or six is when you hear people do, just like you saw in the intro, this type of thing. You know, or that stuff. Now, Physically playing it is not the issue. It's how and when do we do this stuff that really creates a lot of, uh, um, I don't know, questions in my teachings for my students. And and so I want to show you exactly how to think about this stuff. It's actually quite, quite easy. So the first thing we're, in, we're gonna do is discuss the um, the four most common types of shapes of a sliding six or six. The first one is when your middle finger is on the D string and your ring finger is on the uh, B string on the same fret. Or I should raise my guitar a little so you can see it. So, right? Sometimes you're muting that G string, so you can strum them out. But, and this is the one that you see in a Soul Man. Sorry, the very beginning. Those guys right there. And so, well, what the hell is this thing? Well, <laughs> sorry. Uh, the uh, the the real answer is the fact that it comes from this A shaped bar chord. And so now that you can see this. Uh, my right hand, I should do that. Like that. When I look up the tabs for Soul Man, I saw this 9-9, nine, nine, right? And this 7-7. Seven, seven. I said, man, that has to be an E to a D chord. And you look up the chords in the beginning, the very beginning, it's E da, 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 to D. And so now that you can, not, not now, but just, you know, in that brief explanation, I actually recorded a video of me kind of showing you how to uh, think about this on a, uh, on a, not a piece of paper, on a computer graphic. So let's take a look at that graphic and then we'll come back. Shape. And you can see if this was labeled as a one, this would be a six. And again, this is where they get their name sliding six, but they're not really six. And that does nothing for us. So here we uh, go. Well, where does the shape come from? Again, it comes from two shapes within the cage chord system. And if I scroll down here, you'll see them right here. This one being the A-shaped uh, caged chord. Okay, so if I was here on, let's say, the fifth fret, you know, this would be a D chord where you're barring, let's see if I can, like, uh, kind of get a good visual on this where you're barring like this and you might not play, oh, hello, you might not play this note here, just bar across, but there's that A-shaped chord and you can see the fifth and the third of this chord look extremely familiar to the placement of this uh, sliding sixth here. So anytime you play an A-shaped chord here, um, you can play uh, the just these pieces here and if this was you know, the root note, it would be a one and that would be a six. But again, that mentality does nothing for us. It doesn't help us navigate. It doesn't help us place. It doesn't help us play. We just understand, okay, those are a sixth apart. It doesn't do anything for us. So what you want to do is really see the chords are coming from. The next chord shape, which I have right here, is the G uh, shape chord. Again, uh, you know, I have a video link below about the cage chord shapes if you really want to get into them. Uh, and you can see here, here's that same shape. You'd bar this and either put your pinky here or you'd play the thin. Uh, the thicker end and kind of uh, bar over here and leave this note alone. There's two ways to play this chord, but if you're playing it, um, you can see there are the two notes again of the sliding six, but really it's just the five and the third. And again, if I label this the one, you can see, well, that's a one and that's a six. Again, does nothing for us. And so we want to make sure you see, excuse me, you want to make sure that you see the, um, the chord it comes from. So go play a couple of these chords and see if you can just grab these notes out of them and you can get some sliding six going. 
All right, hopefully that made sense. The first uh, sliding six that we just took a look at comes from the A shape chord. So the moral of the story is, you know, um, whenever you're playing this shaped chord, you can put in those two notes in there. And if you're a lead guitar player, you're gonna get all the credit for making everything shine. All right, give me one second. I wanna adjust my seat so you can see my hand. All right, adjusted my seat so you can see this hand a little bit work, you know. And so now, uh, again, the sliding six is nothing more than a chord tone, and um, and they slide well. If you if you have chord progressions that move like this, you can slide them together, and that's where they get their term. Now the next one we're going to take a look at is on the same string set, but it's this note and this note. You saw this in if you saw my video in Fortunate Son by Credence, right? Those two notes and these guys. Oh, excuse me. That guy, okay, is from this chord here, okay? And so, this guy, oh, sorry. All right, these, this shape here, where you have a, a, a finger on the D string and then one fret back on the B string. So now, let's take a look at where these guys come from. Um, if I label this a root note like this, you can see that we do have a root note and then we have what's called a flat six and we can understand why these are called six. Uh, if you look at this as a six, uh, as a root note, excuse me, then this because becomes a flat six. Okay, that kind of makes sense, but the question is how do we place these, right? How do we place this stuff? Now just for some giggles here, if I make this a root note, it becomes a one and a three. And so the idea behind me showing you this is, well, why, why do we call these six? Well, they're called six from the lower note, but the problem is that really still doesn't do anything for us. So I'm gonna show you, these are just chord tones, and these chord tones come from two specific shapes on the guitar, two specific actually caged chord shapes. And so if I scroll down here, here you can see uh, these two shapes. Let's look again, okay, so there is uh, the shape here, right? And we'll go down and here is the infamous C-shaped bar chord. And you can learn about this on my cage chord videos on YouTube. Uh, and if you look here, there's that pattern, right? And we can see if you're playing a, a C-shaped chord where this is the root note, well, we're just playing the major third and the root note. And so whenever you play this type of chord, if this was on, let's say, the fifth fret here, this would be a D chord. Just let you know that that would be a D. And you would play this quote-unquote sliding sixth from this chord, which is really just a one and a three of a D chord, a D major chord. Now let's go look again at the shape, there it is, and we can go and now we can see the same shape over here. Now, I had this labeled incorrectly just to prove a point. This here is the A minor shaped chord. And I was showing you what I was doing there if, if I made this uh, a different root note, if I made this the root note, the chord makes absolutely no sense, but um, I just wanted to go back and show you this. So here we have uh, an A minor shaped chord. Let's say this is the fifth fret. This would be the seventh fret, seventh fret, sixth, and five, fifth fret. These numbers here are the intervals. So here we go. So what we're gonna do here is if you look here, um, this would be a D minor chord if this is on the fifth fret. And when you're playing this shape out of this chord, you can see it exists, you're getting the fifth and the minor third. So the this shape here, excuse me, this shape here can be played whenever you're playing um, a C-shaped chord anywhere and you want to grab the quote-unquote sliding sixth within it and give a little bit of uh, um, pop to your your um, solo or your song and whenever you're playing a an A minor shape chord you can play this quote-unquote sliding sixth within it and just to prove a point again if I make this the root note now the whole chord looks weird but you can see there's the one and there's the flat six as people call it and then if I do it for here, there's the one and there's the flat six, but we don't, they're not really six. Cause look at this chord now, this chord makes absolutely no sense. And this chord here makes absolutely no sense. So really, you know, you wanna know the root note of the chord you're in. And if the shape itself has one of these uh, sliding six shapes in it, excuse me, there's the root there. All right, so that's where the first shape comes from. Hopefully that made sense. All right, so now you see we have a, a C chord, a C shaped chord. So if you write a chord progression and you have, you know, uh, a C chord here, C shaped chord, excuse me. And if you don't know this stuff, you can look at my cage chord videos uh, on my channel. And so if I was doing this, like, there's my sliding six. All right, and so, 
this shape here comes from your C-shaped chord. Again, anytime you have a song, or if you can place this chord somewhere, say the band's playing an E. Well, there's a C-shaped E chord here, and you can use those two notes, and you can slide into them, like that. It's a sliding six, it's a chord tone. Pardon me, I just got an email. All right, so let's keep going. Let's look at another shape. The next shape, and again, I'm just talking about four common shapes here. Um, the next shape you're gonna see is where you have a note on the G, uh, sorry, the G string, and you have uh, a finger one fret back on the um, high E string. These guys. Oops. Right? And so you see this uh, a lot. Um, in all different types of playing. Uh, I see it a lot in Jerry Garcia's playing, but you can do this in the blues, you can do this anytime you want to. But let's discuss where this guy comes from. Here's another video. All right, here's our um, third sixth that we're gonna talk about where we have a note on the G string, skip over the B string, get to the high E string, a fret back. And this is a very common one. And uh, if you look, like I said, if I label this note here as a one, we get the six, there's the flat six. So the name again, these are sixth apart, but really they're not. So where do they come from? Uh, they come from the E-shaped bar chord from the cage chord system. So I have the bar here showing this. Everyone should be familiar with this uh, uh, bar chord. It's the one that we always learn first. And so if this was on the fifth fret here, this would be an A chord, making this the major third and making this the root note. And there's that shape again. I'll go up so you can see it. There they are, right? And we can see, oh, we're playing the third and the first, and that's a piece of the chord. If I label this as the one, the chord completely falls apart theory-wise. Uh, it looks like we get a minor six chord, uh, and there's no reason like we'd say, oh, we're gonna play the minor six, sliding six over an A uh, chord. It just doesn't make sense. So you wanna see that it definitely comes from uh, the E-shaped bar chord, as long as you know uh, where the root note is and these uh, two positions here. So once again, this one, quite simple, comes from whenever you play an E-shaped bar chord. And you can easily put this stuff into your playing and make, give it a little bit of a pizzazz. All right, and we're back, and hopefully you can see that comes from the E major shape chord. All right, and so it's these two notes. So if I have a chord progression, best chord progression in the world, but you can sit and play those six. You play them right on top of the chords, you get the credit because you are the lead guitar player. Uh, and again, if you're a rhythm guitar player, you can sit and do stuff like that. Okay, uh, And so, uh, again, this is this guy here, anytime you have an E-shaped chord you're playing, you can play you can play this let's take a look at the fourth and final all right the fourth and final shape i'm going to talk about is this six the one where we have a note on the g string and then on the same fret on the e string you can see if you label this as a root note this is a straight up sixth and we go okay cool that's a six but the problem is again like i've been saying uh, we don't know how to place this note if we call it a root note. So where these two uh, shapes coexist, or these uh, two notes coexist, and what chord shapes. And so when we scroll down here, here they are again. Uh, we can see here, if we first look at the E minor shaped chord, uh, again, if I was playing this on the fifth fret, this would be an A minor, and there's these two shapes here. So you're seeing you're playing the root, and you're playing the minor third, and that captures the flavor of this chord. So there's that shape right there, there's that shape right there. All right, and now the other shape you can see comes again from the C chord, a C shape chord. This is the second time that chord uh, shape has appeared. And so uh, in this uh, sixth study, uh, and this is a very common sixth to play, the shape here. And you can see if I'm playing a C shape chord, but again, we'll say if we're playing this on the fifth fret, this would be fifth fret, fourth fret, third fret, second fret. You can play these two notes on the second fret and capture the essence of that D chord. You're playing the major third, and the fifth. And so whenever you're playing any one of these shape chords, you can play this uh, sliding sixth or sixth, uh, however you want to call it, uh, and enhance uh, your melodies or you know give a little bit of flair to what you're doing. And back to the video we go. Now this one's a little interesting, right? Because you can see it from an, uh, an E minor shape chord. There's those notes. Or you can see it from the C shape chord. Very versatile. It's why this guy is really popular. And so, um, if you have a chord progression that has either this shape in it, or let's just say, well, okay, let's just say they're playing um, a B minor chord, right? Well, you find your E minor shape, B minor, up here, and now you have your sliding six. So let's say it's B minor to 
A major. Okay, well here's my B minor. And here's my A major. This is the E minor shape and the E major shape. And now if the song was... You can sit like... And play these little sliding six, which are just pieces. One of my favorite examples of uh, the, these these guys on the G and E string is in um, another little piece of my heart, Janis Joplin. Um, it, it, it ends, it, the riff, like the opening riff ends with this like, sorry. And then he, uh, the guitar player does this. And I'll just break that down for you and then do not make you feel. Okay, and so again, it looks like this. And I want to talk to you about this here because this is what you can throw in your soloing anytime you want. Uh, this, they're, they're going into the key of E here. They're going in and, it's, and they're holding an E chord. And the whole premise here is the guitar player takes every chord in the key of E, which is um, pretty much every chord, E major, F sharp minor, G sharp minor, um, uh, sorry, uh, <laughs> A major, B major, my, my brain just froze, C sharp minor, and D diminished. And he plays these sliding six out of these chords. So he plays an E, he mentally plays an E major shaped chord up here for E. So as I was saying, uh, he plays his E major shaped chord here, and then he's going to go to a D diminished chord. Now, a diminished chord has, if you look at, if you look at these chords, a diminished has a one, has a flat uh, three and a double flat, uh, sorry, and a flat five, excuse me. So the diminished chord shape, we haven't really talked about it, you know, I, I did a video on it, but it's right here. And what's important about this is he sees this and you can see that sliding six right there. He has his E major here, and then he goes to his D diminished, but he really just plays this part of it. This is the one, this is the flat three, and this is the flat five. And then he's going to go to the C sharp minor arpeggio. He sees the C sharp minor here. Uh, sorry, C sharp minor chord. He sees the sliding six within it. The, to the B major. That's the E shape. To the A major. To the G sharp minor. And it comes back up. All right, so he's seeing the E major chord. D diminished, D sharp diminished, excuse me, C sharp minor, the B, B major, A major, G sharp minor, A, B, C sharp minor, back to D sharp diminished, and he goes into the, so his whole line, built around uh, using the chords within the key uh, and and seeing them as the bar chords and then grabbing the sixth within. And you can do this in your soloing. If you're soloing in a key, say you're, the song's in E, right? You're playing E, like, and you're soloing, and you want to add some flair, you can do the same exact thing. And I just went down all the, the chords. So knowing your cage chord system chords is very important. Knowing that a sliding six is nothing more than two chord tones out of a bar chord plucked, uh, you know, in this kind of like type fashion, or sometimes you can do them together. But those four shapes are going to save your life and enhance your playing, and hopefully, you truly understand what sliding six are from uh, this point of view. Go uh, take your favorite songs, find some chords, and do some six over them. Have a great day. All right.